defeating anxiety and obtaining biblical peace. Defeating anxiety. Now, do you know people that right now are, have a lot of anxiety? You know what's so sad is the people that turn to alcohol and drugs and so many other things because they are so anxious. Well, what does the Bible say about this? Number one, anxiety causes depression. Did you know that? The, the Bible says anxiety causes depression. Proverbs 12, 25. And I would encourage you to take some screenshots of this with your cell phone. Proverbs 12, 25. Anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression. Did you know that? Anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression. A lot of depressed people today, and many of them have a, probably a good reason to be, but many of them started out with a lot of anxiety. And maybe they had reason to have anxiety with some of the things going on in their life or in our world, but then their anxiety turns into depression and they just can't get out of it. Well, let me see if I can offer you some hope tonight, but understand Proverbs 12, 25, anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression. Well, you know what brings anxiety? Worry. Worry brings anxiety. So we say, number one, anxiety causes depression. Number two, worry brings anxiety. Luke 12, 22, 31. Then he said to his disciples, Jesus speaking, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. And then we can see from the scriptures, consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds, and which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? It's really in translation, any time to his life. Now this isn't saying don't make preparations no, the Bible actually can't contradict itself, and yet the Bible says to look at the animals, look at the ant, how it prepares in the summer for the winter. So the Bible speaks about saving, putting away. We see Joseph putting away in the years of plenty for the years of famine. But there's a difference between planning and worry. So you can plan without worrying. He doesn't say don't plan, but he says don't worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. They didn't say don't plan for what you'll eat or what you'll put on. Don't worry about it. Don't fret about it. Don't be anxious about it. It doesn't say you can't prepare. You can't put away. You can't be prepared for hard times. No. It's saying don't sit around worrying. You know what takes away a lot of worrying? When you are prepared. You know that? When you're prepared and you put away and you save and you conserve and you put away for hard times, guess what? That takes away a lot of your worry and anxiety because you've made preparations. And you can now say, well, I've done the best of my ability to prepare, but at the end of the day, we'll put our faith and trust in God. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. So people point to this verse and say, well, see, God tells you don't worry about preparing for anything. No, that's not what it's saying. Don't worry about it. One great way to not worry is actually prepare for what it is you're worried about. Then you can have some peace and comfort knowing that you've been wise. A prudent man sees danger and takes refuge, but the fool ignores it and suffers, the Bible says. Then it goes on in the scriptures to say there in Luke, then if you are not able to do the least, why are you anxious? So here's that anxious, anxious, someone's anxious anxiety brings depression. Why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass, which today is in the field, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? So God will provide. God will provide. Here's the question. What are you doing with what he's provided? What are you doing now with what he has provided you with? So if God has provided for you a means by which to take care of some needs in the future that you think might come about, then use those things he's provided to you wisely. So again, a lot of the reasons we have worry or anxiety or find ourselves in a bad spot is because we haven't been good stewards. We haven't prepared. Be a good steward, prepare, put away, make provisions, and you'll see a lot of your worry, which turns into anxiety, disappear. And do not seek what you should eat or drink, what you should drink, nor have anxious mind. They don't have an anxious mind, okay? So I can... I can put away, I can prepare, I can make preparations, but I can do it not from an anxious, fearful mind. I can do it from a common sense mind, a mind that is prudent, being sensible. For all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God 
and all these things shall be added to you. So here you go. Seek after God. Seek after God. Seek after the kingdom of God, the things of God. And guess what? These things will happen. They'll, they'll be provided to you. He'll, he'll give you what you need, when you need it, the provisions you need to have the clothes and the food and the things that you need. So if God has provided for you with resources and you're concerned about the future, then don't be anxious or worry. Take what God's given you. Use your money wisely. Be a good steward. Make preparations and then stop worrying. Then just trust. I've done all I can do, Lord. I'm a good steward and I'm counting on you and having faith in you. I did what was responsible, what I think you would have me to do with the resources you've given me. And now I'm going to ask you for peace. Look at Luke 12, 22 to 32. Do not worry. Verse 25. Which of you by worrying? Verse 26. Why are you anxious? Why are you anxious? Rest. Don't have an anxious mind. So we have three. Wrong priorities bring despair. Wrong priorities bring despair. Luke 12, 34. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Are your priorities right? Because if your priorities are wrong, that can bring despair. Peace is taken by a quarrelsome home. If you've got teenagers, you've known this at some point, right? Peace is taken by a quarrelsome home. Try to make your home a place of sanctuary, of peace, no drama. That's kind of our saying around here. Peace is taken by a quarrelsome home or a quarrelsome workplace, work environment. Try not to be around people that are just always constantly quarreling, nagging, fighting, because that takes away peace. Proverbs 17, 1, better is a dry morsel with quietness than a house full of feasting with strife. Proverbs 15, 17, better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a fatted calf with hatred. God gives peace to those that seek him. You want peace? Seek after God. Psalm 34, 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Number six, God gives peace to those that obey him. Sometimes we don't have peace because we're under conviction. Sometimes we don't have peace because we're under conviction. So God gives peace to those who obey him. Great way to go to sleep at night, isn't it? Without all that guilt, anxiety, and fear, and depression that comes with all that because you're not doing what you should be doing. But God gives peace to those who obey him. Number six, Philippians 4, 9, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Galatians 5, 22 to 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Psalm 119, 165, great peace have those who love your law. What's your law? The Word of God, the law of God, the Word of God. Seven, God gives peace to those that are corrected by him. So when we're corrected by him, we're chastised by him, the Holy Spirit convicts us of things to bring more on the line with the sanctification process of ongoing faithfulness and obedience, and God gives peace to those who are corrected by him. Hebrews 12, 11, now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Job 5, 17, behold, happy is the man whom God corrects. Therefore, do not despise the chastening of the Almighty. Eight, believers can feel despair. Well, that can happen. Job 7, 6, my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and I spent and are spent without hope. So, yep, even us Christians, we sometimes feel despair. Psalm 55, 5, Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. But nine believers need not feel despair. 2 Corinthians 4, 7-9, But we have this treasure in earthen vessel, that the excellence of the power of, may be of God and not of ourselves. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. But not in despair. But not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. 10, a spirit of fear does not come from God. 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of, powerful and, uh, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Number 11, God is aware of our despair and anxiety and offers a solution. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Take to God 
what is your concern, take to God what is your fear, take to God what is your despair, take to God what you're anxious about. Don't be anxious about it, but, by, but in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication. And the peace, what does it say will happen when you do that? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Twelve, God is in our, God, our hope is in God. Our hope is in God. Psalm 42, 5, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 64, 10, the righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. 13, God takes care of the righteous. God takes care of the righteous. Job 36, 7, he does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous. Psalm 37, 25, have not been, have, have, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. 14, anxiety calls into questions, question God's power. So let's trust in him. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What's that mean? I can endure hardship, persecution, trials, because Christ will strengthen me. Because why? Anxiety, we don't want to be like that. We don't be anxious because it calls into question God's power. And we know that God is all powerful. And in him, he can see us through. Through him, we can see through all kinds of trials and tribulations. That's what the Apostle Paul was writing about. He says in Galatians, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Anxiety calls into question God's provision. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. There's the provision. God provides so much for us. He even provided the precious Lamb of God, the Son of God, to take away our sins through faith and repentance. He provided a way for us to avoid eternal damnation. If he can provide for us and loves us that much, can he provide other things for us that we need? Absolutely. So don't call into question God's provision. 16, anxiety calls into question God's priority, like he doesn't care for you. But yet Luke 12, 24 to 28 tells us, again, consider the ravens. Well, of course, we don't want to question God's priority over us. If his priority is even on the ravens, how much more must they be on us, right? And then 17, God calls uh, anxiety calls into question God's providence, his divine guidance. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Anxiety calls into question God's sovereignty, his absolute power, or his absolute authority. So don't be anxious. Hebrews 1, 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself pur purged our sins, set down at the right hand of the majesty of on high. So God's sovereign, he's all powerful. He has absolute authority. And he is sitting on the right hand right now. He's all powerful. Colossians 1:17 and he is before all things and in him all things consist. DG Lindsay talks about the power of the atom. What holds everything together? The pymesin. We don't know what it is. We can't see it, can't smell it, but we know it's there. Well, the Bible says that God holds everything together by his powerfulness. And so when we are anxious, we're calling into question not only his provision, his priorities, but his providence, his being all powerful. So I hope you, some of that helps you tonight. Very important to talk about these issues when we have so much to be anxious about. And I hope some of you could take those verses down and to provide some comfort for you.